I know this is a long video, so if you do not have a lot of time, I have left chapters down below. You can skip around to the parts that interest you the most. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and join me today for another garden update. We're gonna go check out the chilies. We're gonna have a look at the vegetable patch. And there's a couple new additions to the Chili Chump homestead that I'll show you towards the end. Today, we're gonna start off inside the polytunnel. This is a bit of a mixed bag. I am pretty happy with a lot of what's going on in here, but there's a few things that uh, need to improve. First things first, we can see that the raised beds are doing really well. Thank you once again to Kevin from Epic Gardening. If you are looking for some awesome raised beds, then I'll leave links down below and you can go and check out what he has. But they are doing fantastically. We'll take a closer look at them in just a bit. If you have a look at my hydro system, this is where there are a few small issues which I'll go through with you and uh, I'm sure you can see a few problems already. Plants like this have really battled in this heat. You can see it looks like it's drooping. The leaves are they're okay. They're not perfect. Um, I'm surprised this actually hasn't died to be honest. It's really looked a lot worse than this in the last couple of weeks where we had some serious heat. Today's a little milder about 10 degrees Celsius lower than it has been. But uh, this plant, as well as another one, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, this one is the KS Orange Flame. As you can see, the pots are obviously black, and when the sun hits those pots, it really heats them up, and there's nothing really to cool things down until the water or the nutrients start pumping through the system. I have increased the amount of times that the nutrients pump through, so we're up to about once an hour, especially now during the hotter days and I'll decrease that again once things settle down. This is another one that has a similar problem. So this is a KS Peach Pumpkin. This one as well, battling quite a bit. It's limiting the growth with this amount of heat. Actually, I actually don't really know what the answer is. What I'll probably end up doing next year is just planting plants like this over here inside the polytunnel in this hydroponic system because this seems to thrive on very hot roots. This here is a pepperoncini. You'll commonly see them at pizza shops, nicely pickled, and we already have loads of them on here. It's a beautiful plant, and it really does seem to be thriving in this environment. Like I said, these pots can get so, so hot, and yeah, just some plants can't deal with that sort of heat on the roots, and some plants just do brilliantly. The good news is plants like this bleeding jigsaw seem to be thriving in the system. This is a capsicum chinense and a super hot. So that's good news. I was worried I was only going to be able to grow things like my peri peri and my CC jalapeno, which you can see back there is doing quite well as well. There's lots of small chilies coming through on that already. But yeah, definitely next year, I'm going to keep an eye on all the plants that are in the system and I'll only plant the types that thrive like this is doing and like the pepperoncini and uh, I'll only plant those ones inside here in the polytunnel and the rest, yeah, they can just go inside the greenhouse in soil. Another issue I'm having is supporting these plants. We can see that this plant here is quite loose because the root system just isn't big enough that it's holding this in place. I am supporting it at the moment with some string tied up to the ceiling but yeah, it's not ideal. I need to come up with a better way. If you've got any ideas, if you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I can't exactly use bamboo sticks because I, well, I just don't think it'll work well with the medium I'm using, this hydrogen. But if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. If we shift our view across to the raised beds, we can see just how well these plants are doing. I planted them in the soil here quite a bit after I started these hydroponics plants. Uh, the seeds were started at roughly the same sort of time, but yeah, when they were potted up, well, I consider this potting them up, um, yeah, it was quite a bit after, but you can see the growth here has been phenomenal. They are loving the heat. They aren't affected like the hydroponics plants with the roots being too hot because we are growing in soil and that's far more forgiving but we have loads of fruit already coming through on these plants. This here is a sweet pepper. And look at the size of that, it's beautiful. And the plant's only that high, so the pepper itself is about half the size of the plant. And that's pretty incredible. I had to stake it because it was pulling the whole plant over. There's two of them on there, actually. You can see there. Uh, which one is this? 
It's the California Wonder. It's uh, capsicum and noom and has zero heat. But yeah, I can't wait to try these out. I'm sure this plant is going to get quite a bit bigger as well. There's another pepperoncini plant. This is a golden Greek pepperoncini. And again, can't wait to try these. But loads of fruit coming through and loads of flowers. So we're going to have plenty more coming through there. And it's looking really, really healthy. This plant might look like it's in a bit of trouble, but actually it's recovering really well. So this here, the, the leaves did all fall off. Uh, I think it just battled. It got uh, way too much sun and heat at the time that I'd potted it up. But we can see all this new growth coming through. I mean, this is all new since about two or three weeks ago. But you can see there's still some leaves here coming off. Uh, I can take those off actually, because they are going to fall off anyway. But you've got all this new growth coming through. And this plant is going to do just fantastically. It'll grow pretty quickly now that those leaves have come back. This here is a Scotch Bonnet Red. It's actually some of the seeds from my shop. And it is looking beautiful. I don't expect it to have any chilies just yet. Although we do have some flowers coming through. And I think we'll have some fruit setting soon. But Capsicum Chinans, they typically will fruit quite a bit later in the season compared to some of your other plants. I think it does need some support though. This here is another one of my sweet peppers. This is a Ramiro Red, and have a look at that. That thing is a beast. That is gonna be beautiful. We've got a few chilies on this. It's not a massive plant. Again, it's about a third of the size of the plant itself, these chilies, but that is just gonna be delicious. I do recommend if you haven't grown these before, do try and find a spot for them because they're just perfect to snack on, very sweet and flavorful. Much better than just your random bell pepper or something like that. This is my first year growing these. This is the orange lacer. Take a look at that pod. Quite unique and another one I just cannot wait to taste. And we have quite a few on here already. It's quite a productive plant. And it has four, four of them on there. It's actually weighing this down. I need to support that with some bamboo as well. Over here is a Naga Viper Brain. Again, no chilies on this because it is a super hot and that will come a little bit later in the season, but we do have some flowers coming through. This plant looks incredibly industrious. Loads of leaves and it's looking really healthy. Over here we do have some pods. These are paprika and again, beautiful chili for sauces. And it's laden. Another one I'm going to have to support with some bamboo. I'm going to be a bit busy after this video. This here is another old favorite, the Ring of Fire. These are basically like cayenne, so it has a similar flavor profile to cayenne, but quite a bit hotter. And yeah, they absolutely are delicious. I have done a video reviewing these before, so I'll try and leave a link for that up above or down in the description. But you can see just how productive this plant is. Beautiful. This is a plant you may recognize from earlier in the season. I actually featured it in a thumbnail in one of my earlier garden update videos. It's a pepper dew plant that was growing with a bit of a twisty stem. It circled back on itself. Now, I don't know if you can really make that out properly, but there it is down there. It still has a twisted stem. Uh, the main branch is this one coming up over there. And this is just coming off the side of the twist. You can kind of make it out down there. But yeah, it's still going strong and we have some fruit coming through as well. I love these little anomalies that you sometimes get. Before we left the polytunnel, I want to show you one last thing. It's this lemon tree. I've always wanted to grow a lemon tree in the UK. And yeah, we finally got one. And I'm going to leave it here in the polytunnel, even through the winter. And hopefully it survives. We already have some lemons on it and some new ones coming through over here. And yeah, plenty of flowers as well. Beautiful flowers. But... Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see how this does. Hopefully it does last through the winter. I will try and take care of it. Obviously I can't put heating on in here, but uh, we'll do what we can to make sure that it survives. But it's looking beautiful and it's loving, loving the sunshine. The plants in Big Chump are doing really nicely. I've been happy with the progress. We are going to see a massive amount of growth over the next month or so because these roots inside the pots are going to have properly filled them. And that means we can then take on a lot more water, a lot more nutrients, and yeah, we're just going to see some serious progress. These here are all my super hots down the left-hand side. I have super hots elsewhere as well, but these are some of the ones that I'm paying particular attention to, especially down the end there. We have some primatales, and uh, yeah, they're all doing very nicely. But these plants are going to be massive in the next 
I'd say probably three or four weeks, we're gonna see these pretty much doubling in size. This here is one of my Fatali plants. It's a Capscom Chinense, and we already have a pod or two on this. You can see they're a very small one, but we'll see a lot more soon. And this again will grow pretty massive. But that's a healthy looking plant, lots of new growth coming through on these nodes. And uh, yeah, another chili starting out over there. That's looking beautiful. This here is one of my primatales, the red primatale, and it is looking absolutely beautiful. Lots of internodal growth coming through, new growth, and we can see some flowers starting off. We'll be letting them set some fruit soon. I, I might actually just take these flowers off at this stage, because again, I want this plant to get pretty massive, and we still have quite a lot of time for these to set fruit. So yeah, just taking off these flowers will help it to focus its growth on the roots as well as the rest of this plant rather than trying to set fruit. This here is a jig tali. I haven't grown this one before and it is a cross between a jigsaw and a fatali, but it looks wonderful. Look at the size of those leaves. That there is huge. I have a plant, however, with even bigger leaves than that. Let's go check it out. This is my seven pot Primo inside my hydroponic system that I built. I'll leave a link up above for the uh, video where I built that. But take a look at these leaves. <laughs> They're massive. But such a stunning, healthy plant. Really am pleased with it. Loads of flowers. I keep picking them off. But yeah, they keep coming back very quickly. And uh, I think I'm going to stop picking them off in probably the next... I don't know, next two or three weeks, and then we'll just let it do its thing. Again, it just helps to focus the growth on the plant itself and get a much bigger plant so we can get far more chilies. The water pot system I was sent to try has actually been doing pretty well. You can see the size of these plants. They are looking really healthy. Uh, yeah, it's kind of doing the trick. I need to top that up. That's down at about a third. So I need to get that topped up. But yeah, these plants are looking healthy. I did have one little issue with this plant here. I'm not too sure what the exact problem is. It could have been bugs that were eating at the stem, but basically the whole thing had collapsed. It seems to be alive still. But yeah, I don't know if it is because the... I don't know, because the soil has been just constantly wet. That's my only problem that I have with these sort of systems. But honestly, you can't argue with... The progress it's it's got some decent looking plants there and they aren't looking waterlogged in the sense of the leaves being light colored or anything like that so yeah we'll keep on checking it out through the year but yeah so far so good this is a beautiful little plant this is the golden nugget and we can see there the little pods coming through they start off purple uh, the flowers actually are purple as well we can see over there beautiful little things and apparently as it grows and as it matures it's going to change into a few different colors as well we'll get some striping on it similar to what you see on these leaves quite interesting looking leaves but yeah so far i've been pretty happy beautiful little plant some more fruit coming through this is my cc peri peri we can see there lovely chili and there's uh, some ones up top here as well uh, this plant it grows quite tall in the beginning but then uh, it starts to spread out as the season progresses. How are your CC Peri Peri is getting on? I know quite a few of you have bought seeds from me for this plant. Have you had your first chilies yet? Let me know down in the comments below. These are the leftover plants from my season. Basically, these are some of the extras that I had when I started off, and I won't be potting them up. I've already sold about half of them, and quite a few of you guys have actually come to pick them up. <sighs> Uh, it might be a bit late in the season now, but if any of you are desperate for some plants that you want to plant out now, then get in contact with me if you live in the Lincolnshire area, because I will not be delivering these things. What is pretty cool, though, is to see just how big some of these pods can get in such small pots. This here is a Ramiro. I think it's a Ramiro chocolate here. And yeah, look at the size of that. There's actually two on there in such a small little pot. Quite incredible. Uh, back here is an orange lacer, so similar to what I showed you before. Not as big as the one that I've potted up, obviously, but still pretty nice to get little 
pods on there like that. So just bear that in mind. If you don't have the space, you don't have to be planting out in 10 litre pots like I do. You can pot out in much smaller pots. I actually need to water these because, yeah, they are dried out. But that's another orange laser. Oh, no, it's a red laser, actually. So, yeah, some beautiful pods coming through. One of the big challenges we have in the UK this year, especially, is we don't typically get this sort of weather in June. We've had about two to three weeks of just beautiful, hot, sunny weather. We've averaged probably about 26, 28 degrees Celsius. We've had a few days where it's gone over 30 degrees Celsius. And that's a real problem when your plant's root system hasn't fully developed. When the plant's root system is fully developed, it's a lot easier to water these plants. It really is a balancing act, as it always is with watering. You want to be able to saturate that root ball and you want to allow it to be able to dry out gradually over a couple of days and then saturate it again. This allows the roots to breathe, it allows the plant to be healthy and do its thing. But when the weather has been as hot as it's been lately and the root ball's quite small, that's a bit tougher to actually manage. So just keep that in mind when you are watering, especially when the heat is like this. Um, yeah, just try and balance what you're doing. But let's take a look. There's a plant over here that I am really not happy with at the moment. You can see just how small that plant is. I believe this is the Oleo Pexo White. I know I'm probably saying that completely wrong. So Oleo de Pexo White. And I know quite a few of you guys are growing it because it is part of the Chili Chum Seed Kit 2023. And a few of you have had the same challenge. I think it's just the plant itself. It's, oh, it's quite tough. You can see I've actually taken out the drippers because I can still feel the moisture. When I was talking about the balance that we have, um, this one, yeah, I just can't get it to properly dry out. So what I'm doing now is I'm just keeping a very close eye on it. I've stopped watering probably four days ago and it's still alive and there's still some new growth coming through there. I'm betting that root system is probably about that small, tiny, like the size of my fist. And that's no good. This, the root system needs to spread. Uh, I can feel the soil is pretty wet down there, moist, not soaking. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if we can get this to grow a little bit quicker and we'll keep you updated in future episodes. But if you're having similar challenges, let me know in the comments down below if you're seeing the similar sort of growth patterns as this. But yeah, kind of expect it to be a little bit bigger than that by now. I think we might have a couple contenders for the big and tall competition. This here is my spaghetti chili. And just check the length of that. That there is about 30 centimeters, I'd say. That one there as well, same sort of size. Uh, got one ripening over here as well. It's starting to blush a little red. But yeah, beautiful little plant and still growing. <laughs> We've still got quite a while to go before this is finished. So yeah, make sure that you are entering the big and tall competition if you have a contender for a really heavy chili or a really long chili. And again, I'll leave a link down below for details of how to enter that competition. This is the Turkish flower pepper. And just look at this. They come out in these little bunches like this. So it looks like a flower and, and you'll see them doing that. You can see it over here as well. And there's big red chilies that all pop out in these little bunches like this. This looks amazing. I cannot wait for them all to start ripening. But what a stunning little plant. You can see there just forming all at the top. Another bunch over there. There's, well, there really is a bunch down there. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful little thing. That's the Turkish flower pepper. You gotta love the flowers of the capsicum pubescens plants. They are just stunning. Some of the most beautiful out there. This is a ricotta marlene, and we already have some pods coming through. Beautiful plant, and I've had to stake it up. It's one of my tallest, and uh, yeah, it's quite a beauty. You definitely need to grow a capsicum pubescens plant in your chili grow. If you're not doing it this year, make sure that you do it next year because there's some beautiful ones out there. The vegetable garden is looking stunning. It has been a bit of a challenge keeping this watered during this hotter weather we've had, but uh, we've managed and you can see the, the peas here are doing amazingly. I absolutely think I started them way too early. You can see the corn is down the bottom there in between the rows of peas. The corn should be a lot higher than the peas right now. The peas should be using the corn as supports, but that just hasn't happened. So lesson learned next year, make sure I start my corn earlier than my peas. 
But we've been picking loads of peas and uh, Barney absolutely loves eating peas. So I suppose that's a good thing. He actually picks off all the shell and then eats all the peas in the inside. At the back there, you can see our artichokes are just looking amazing. We've picked loads already and there are plenty more coming through. The tomatoes are looking good. We've almost doubled in size. So that's this bed over here, this first bed and the end bed as well. And yeah, they're doing really well. They battle a little bit with the sun that we've had. And again, with the watering, we need a proper saturation. We haven't been able to do that, but we've had a little bit of rain last night and hopefully we're gonna have a little bit more later on next week. The cabbage bed here is doing really nicely. We've got some tundra cabbage in there. We've got some Chinese cabbage. We've also got some pok choy and they're all looking really good and healthy. I took a tip from one of you guys. Thank you very much uh, from a comment from one of my previous garden update videos where I mentioned I was having some problems with my cabbages. You can see at the back there, that's another row of cabbages and they were planted much earlier than the ones I've just shown you and they aren't doing very well but the tip was basically check that your soil is not too acidic because I grow with very acidic soil and um, yeah I had to amend it so basically I just added some lime to this and uh, yeah we can see the results so thank you very very much something you're going to notice is missing over here is all my garlic because I have picked it. We have beautiful garlic this year. I've grown garlic before and I've had some success with it, but this year was the best harvest I've ever had. And uh, we'll be able to make plenty, plenty chili sauce with it. In particular, my garlic fire, where I make some black garlic and combine it with some beautiful soup art chilies. That's it for the garden tour. But I did mention in the beginning of the video that there were a couple new additions to the Chili Chump homestead. The first one is to do with water. So behind me over here, you can see I have an IBC. I actually have five IBCs. These are a thousand liter tanks or one meter cube tanks that I use to collect rainwater. I have five for each of the greenhouses, so that's 10,000 liters. I have one other IBC that sits over that way by my shed and uh, that gives me a total of about 11,000 liters. The problem is every year I run low. Now I've run out once last year when we had a serious heat wave, but I just don't want to risk that again. So I was going to go buy a couple more IBCs, but my contact that I use, he started talking me into getting something a little bit bigger. And I kind of agreed with him because I don't want to keep dotting these IBCs all over my property. It's just, it's just a pain to deal with. So we got a bit of a bigger tank. The challenge was uh, when this tank arrived, it was a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't quite think it through completely. And yeah, we had a bit of a challenge trying to move it. Now, here's a picture of the tank. How would you move that tank about 150 meters around obstacles and into quite a tight little space? How would you do it? Because we talked this through for a couple of hours. I don't have a forklift. I don't have any machinery or anything like that. So we went through a few different ideas of how we might do this. We actually discussed this in my podcast that I did recently with my brother and also Mrs. Chili Chump. So make sure you go check that one out. Uh, we did discuss a few of the things that we were gonna do, but how would you do it? Just let me know in the comments below because yeah, we came up with some crazy ideas and it turned out that the simplest idea actually worked best. And this is how we did it. Here we have a little video of us moving this tank. It ended up being ridiculously easy. So yeah, anyway, next time you wanna move a 10,000 liter tank and you don't have any machinery to do it, take a look at this video and you'll see exactly how you can do it as well. This here is the 11th IBC that I mentioned. It's collecting water off of the workshop over here. And it's basically used in the beginning of the season when I'm starting my seeds. I can get some water off of this to directly uh, go and water my seedlings. But it's also there as a stopgap, as an emergency stop, if I do actually run out of water in my other 10,000 liters. So it's pretty handy for that. Now, let's swing around and have a look at what we have bought. I might need to zoom out a little bit for this. Uh, yep. <laughs> This is the 10,000 liter tank. So we see that it's 2.2 meters up to that line. And obviously it goes a little bit higher than that. 
all we need to do now is actually fill this up. Now, I'm not too sure that I'll fill this up by the end of this year, but it'll absolutely be full by the beginning of next season. And I've worked out with this 10,000 liter tank, as well as my other 11,000 liters that I have, I'll be able to last an entire season without any more rainfall. And that's with all my hydroponics and also managing all of my vegetable patches outside. And that is exactly the position I want to be in because it's a bit of peace of mind. I think it is absolutely necessary, especially to keep my business running and uh, just help me sleep at night. I'm not sure if you remember, but over here I had a small shed where I did all my worm composting in. Well, we took that shed down and we built this instead. This is actually coming off the back of a large shed that I had to the right hand side. And uh, we basically put some tin roof across the entire way. This was a solid four days of work to actually do this. We built a whole new section coming up off the back of that shed. And I'll show you inside this new addition over here and you'll be able to make more sense of it. But we added the tin roofing and tin sides to the whole structure. And that'll make sure I don't have to keep replacing the felt because that's a real pain in the backside. And uh, there's a huge amount of water that'll come off here and be able to run off into this IBC. And I'll be using this runoff to fill up the large 10,000 liter tank. I have a small pump that will do all that. Of course, my worms will be in here as well, but that's not the main reason for this shed or this extension, whatever you want to call it. It's also for storage. So all my pots that I have, I can store all my perlite, vermiculite and all that in here as well. And all my nutrients, I can work with them in here. It's nice to keep them out of the sunlight and uh, it's just a lot easier to work with. So yeah, it's a beautiful space. You can see at the back, that is the old shed, the green part there. And we've just built up against that frame. So we've kept the same sort of dimensions uh, width wise. And then we just extended it out a few meters. So yeah, really happy with this and it's gonna come in very handy. I hope that your season is going fantastically and you're enjoying this beautiful weather. And I hope that your plants are doing brilliantly and I cannot wait to see you on the next video. Until then, stay spicy.